This is Peng Shui. She's a former Chinese professional tennis player and back in February of 2014, she was ranked as the world number one doubles player by the WTA, becoming the first ever Chinese tennis player to achieve that title. You would think that the CCP would be unbelievably proud of her, but in reality, they despise her. On the 2nd of November 2021, Peng Shui went missing almost immediately after publicly accusing a Communist Party leader of sexually assaulting her. She was unheard of for three whole weeks before being spotted at several carefully staged events including the Winter Olympics. Her reappearance has been disturbing to say the least. The Chinese government released an unsettling in-person interview with Peng Shui. At one point in the interview, Peng is asked if she's free to go as she pleases. Her expression immediately changes from one of relaxation to one of shock and she appears not to have heard the question and she asks the interviewer to repeat that question. Many have speculated that Peng Shui actually did hear that question and she was simply trying to bide her time to figure out how she should reply. Later on in the interview, Peng is asked if the allegations she posted before her disappearance were actually written by her. She again asks for a question to be repeated because she apparently did not hear it and then proceeds to laugh. But her expression and her mannerisms are anything but jolly. Her laughter seemed pained and the entire situation was just bizarre. But this isn't unusual for China, far from it in fact. Chinese celebrities and billionaires are constantly disappearing the moment they challenge or criticize the Communist Party of China. There are many people who disagree with the idea that China is an awful place to live, and they point at booming metropolises of Beijing or Shanghai, but the reality is that China is building a sprawling system that combines dystopian technology and human policing. In the region of Kashgar, growing a beard can get you reported to the police, and that's not even the only ridiculous but strictly enforced law the people of Kashgar are subjected to. Inviting too many people to your wedding or naming your child Mohammed or Medina are also severely punishable crimes. If you attempted to drive to a neighboring town, you'd hit checkpoints where armed police officers would seize your phone and search for banned apps like Facebook or Twitter. If that wasn't invasive enough, they might scroll through your text messages to see if you had used any religious language. If someone were to dislike these authoritarian laws and complain to their friends or family over the phone, they would then get a visit from the police just hours later. This is the sad reality of living in China. Now, a common misconception though is that life in China is only dystopian for the low-level citizens and the people that the Communist Party don't like, but that is fundamentally wrong. Celebrities like athletes that are flaunted to the West by the CCP as examples of Chinese excellence are also trapped on dangerously thin ice. As soon as those beloved public figures say anything contrary to the CCP's values, they are punished severely. Peng Shui is just one tragic and disturbing illustration of what happens to celebrities when they cross the line in China. Now, she was born on January the 8th of 1986 in Hunan and is a former doubles world number one. Her impressive range of achievements include two Grand Slam doubles titles, one even at Wimbledon in 2013, the most prestigious tennis tournament in the entire world. On November 2, 2021, Peng Shui sealed her fate with a post on Chinese social network Weibo. In it, she said that she'd had a secret affair with Vice Premier Zhang Gaoli, which ended after he was promoted and moved to Beijing, and then had resumed after she had been taken to his home and coerced into sex. In the post, Peng said that originally she hadn't agreed to a sexual relationship with him and kept crying, but eventually she agreed. Her post was deleted within the hour, but that was long enough for the news to get out there. The accusations began to spread like wildfire, and the Communist Party could not stand for this. They immediately began stamping out the news, censoring her name and the word tennis on various social networks. The CCP even tried to force the mouths of her supporters shut by blocking comments on Peng's own timeline, making it impossible for her over 500,000 fans to engage in any conversation. Just a day later, a Chinese tennis commentator wrote, hope you are safe and how desperate and helpless she must have been. Both of these posts though were quickly taken down. But despite the efforts of the Communist Party, word got out. Several days after Peng's original post, an online campaign using the hashtag where is Peng Shui began circulating and started trending on Twitter. The CCP were no doubt infuriated by this, but the news had reached the West and it was now out of their control. Obviously, the Communist Party had to do something. The story had escaped their borders and it was no longer possible to simply make Peng Shui disappear. 
Instead, they decided to make a shoddy attempt at controlling the damage. Peng Shui's disappearance went viral and everyone seemed to be asking the question, where is Peng Shui, including even the Women's Tennis Association. The WTA demanded a full and transparent investigation into Peng's sexual assault allegations and even threatened to completely pull out of China. Huge tennis stars started speaking out about Peng, from Naomi Osaka to Serena Williams to Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. Seeing these big stars call out China was refreshing to say the least. Unlike the NBA, the Women's Tennis Association showed that they have a backbone. They were willing to pull out of China, even if it cost them millions. The backlash was clearly strong, and so the Chinese regime's propaganda machine set out to reassure the world that Peng Shui was just fine. The results, though, were laughable. First, a state-run news organization published an email allegedly from Peng to the head of the WTA saying that she's not missing or unsafe, she's just resting, and that the sexual assault allegations were completely fabricated. The email was a complete embarrassment and failed to convince anyone that Peng was actually happy and safe. In fact, the only convincing the email managed to achieve was in the other direction. It was a clear, blatant fabrication, and people were quick to point it out. There was even literally a cursor blinking in the supposed email, and it looked as if someone had typed it out onto a Word document and sloppily screenshotted it. Because the first cover-up effort was a complete disgrace, a state-run media worker posted photos of Peng that were supposedly from her WeChat account. The third photo in particular attracted a lot of attention since in that photo, she's holding a Kung Fu Panda in front of another photo of her with Winnie the Pooh. But this attempt was again a failure. So next, the editor-in-chief of Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, started posting videos of Peng having dinner in a restaurant. In the first video, people mentioned the date out loud, which is an extremely uncommon behavior of people who eat dinner, as we all know. In the second video, the date is written on the door, which is obviously, again, a completely abnormal thing for restaurants to do. For some reason, these videos showing completely typical mannerisms, yet again, didn't manage to convince anyone, and so the very next day, videos of Peng Shui signing autographs at a youth tennis match were posted. A little while after that, the president of the International Olympic Committee was able to have a phone call with Peng and a video call as well, and she seemed fine, but most people can make themselves look fine if there's a gun to the back of their heads. What's interesting is that the call was with the IOC and not the WTA, which had been demanding to talk directly to Peng Shui all along. Many people have speculated that the reason for this is because at the time, the IOC was planning to hold the Olympics in Beijing just a few months afterwards, and so they were most likely willing to comply with the Communist Party and not ask any awkward questions. To absolutely no one's surprise, the CCP's propaganda backfired again because the more they insisted Peng was doing great, the more people had questions about whether or not she was really okay. Earlier this year, Peng gave an interview to French media outlet Le Quip at the Winter Olympics which was strongly denounced by human rights activists as a forced confession. Images taken during the interview that was held in a 16th floor suite of an upmarket Beijing hotel show masked officials caught in reflections in the mirror. Le Quip said the interview, which was the first that Peng had given to media outside China since vanishing, was heavily stage managed and that Chinese Olympic officials had insisted on sending translators along. And that Chinese Olympic officials had insisted on sending translators along with them, despite the fact that Peng speaks very good English. Then, during the sit-down, she spoke only in Chinese. Peng was quizzed as to why she had accused China's ex-deputy premier of sexual assault on social media, and Peng flatly denied that it had ever even happened. When she was asked why she then disappeared from the public for almost three weeks directly after the allegations, Peng replied that she simply never disappeared. This is textbook doublethink, almost as if it came directly out of Orwell's 1984 novel. Peng then stated that all claims to the contrary are simply part of an enormous misunderstanding. Everything about the interview screamed forced, but sadly, there was nothing anyone can do to save Peng Shui as long as the CCP have her clasped in their iron grip. For many Westerners, the Peng Shui disappearance was shocking, but for those who actually know China, it's not surprising at all. Numerous public figures in China have been silenced by the Communist Party simply for criticizing them. 
On October the 24th of 2020, Alibaba founder Jack Ma, one of the most powerful men on the planet and worth over $34 billion at the time, gave a speech in Shanghai that seemingly altered the course of his life forever. Beforehand, the billionaire, who is China's equivalent of Jeff Bezos, was about to go public with his latest fintech venture, Ant Group, in what would have been the world's largest IPO. In his speech, though, he slightly criticized China's regulatory system, noting that Chinese banks have a pawn shop way of doing things. To someone from the US where attacking big government is almost a national pastime, this barely even registers as criticism, but in China, it was a very big deal. Reuters reported that Ma's underlings advised him to tone down his speech and warned him that the audience would include some of the country's most senior financial regulators, but the second richest man in China, determined to speak his mind, disregarded that advice and he went ahead with his speech as planned. This decision would shatter Ma's seemingly exponential success and change his future forever. The Communist Party simply cannot stand for even a tiny amount of criticism to their regime, and so President Xi Jinping made the personal decision to block Ant Group's IPO. The Wall Street Journal also claims that sources informed them that financial regulators began looking into Alibaba for violating antitrust laws. Then Jack Ma disappeared, and he wouldn't be heard from again for three whole months. He was supposed to appear on a television show known as Africa's Business Heroes, a program similar to Dragon's Den that he himself had created. He was even quoted as saying in advance that he was very excited for the finale. But bizarrely, after his speech, he was replaced on the show by Lucy Peng, an Alibaba executive, and his image was removed from the website altogether. Was Jack Ma simply keeping a low profile after a speech blew up in his face, or was something more insidious going on? everyone wanted to know. So what exactly happened? Well, in China, there's an unspoken but strictly enforced rule. You can become big, but not any bigger than the CCP. Jack seemed to have flouted that rule. According to an Alibaba executive, Jack was simply laying low while things were hot, but it's very possible that Jack was detained or even tortured. Even if it wasn't Jack that was being beaten, his companies definitely were. On December the 23rd of 2020, China would launch an antitrust investigation into Alibaba for suspected monopolistic practices while simultaneously telling the Yang Group that they need to substantially reduce their scope. They were forced to stop pursuing the insurance and wealth management sectors and simply stick to payment services. China would also move to make the Ant Group a state-owned operation, forcing existing shareholders to give up half of their equity to six outside shareholders. This included a 15% stake to Nanyang Commercial Bank, 5% to another Chinese asset management firm, and 10% to Cathay United Bank, all of which were controlled by the Communist Party. As if this wasn't enough, just a few months later, the CCP hit Alibaba with a massive $2.8 billion fine. Once Jack's companies had been brought to their knees, the CCP switched their focus to destroying his legacy. One of Jack's great achievements was creating a university called Hupan University in 2015 that was focused on creating the next generation of business leaders. The Communist Party forced the school to suspend enrollments, remove Jack as president of the school, and even forced the institution to drop the word university from its name. To this date, there have been very few sightings of Jack Ma as it is obvious that he's keeping an extremely low profile. At this point, he's still got plenty of money, but his legacy is a mere fraction of what it used to be, and the one thing that everyone will truly remember him for is being the billionaire that the CCP made an example out of. Another celebrity on the long list of people the Communist Party has silenced is Zhao Wei. She's a Chinese actress, businesswoman, film director, producer, and pop singer. On the 27th of August 2021, all films and television dramas featuring Zhao disappeared from Chinese video streaming services like Tencent Video and IQI. On top of that, her Waibu Super Talk was deleted and no explanation was given by the Chinese government for this sudden censorship. The next day, Zhao was reported to have left China for France, allegedly being spotted at an airport in Bordeaux that day. In a now-deleted Instagram post from the 29th of August, Zhao claimed she was in Beijing, completely denying that she was in France. Surely, there must have been a reason for the CCP to delete all media of Zhao from Chinese videos and streaming platforms though, right? After all, she was one of the biggest stars in the country. Well, over the last few years, China has been cracking down on the cultural world because the Communist Party is very concerned about the influence that some celebrities have over the younger generation. 
The CCP wants to have total control over how the future generations think, and superstars like Zhao could get in the way of that. She directed a movie called So Young in 2013, but if you go to the movie's entry on the Chinese equivalent of Wikipedia, the name of the director has been replaced by punctuation marks. China has always seen culture as a way of enforcing the right kind of thinking, and recently, the party has been unhappy with the direction Chinese culture has been going in. The CCP has placed itself in the position of God and has sent down the commandment that you shall worship no false idols. In China, a celebrity that's too popular or too famous could send out the wrong message, and that's something the Communist Party really doesn't want to happen. Now, these three cases of the Communist Party silencing celebrities who get in their way have all been relatively recent, but don't let that fool you at all. The Communist Party has been doing this for decades. This is Ai Weiwei. In 1995, he photographed himself as he picked up a 2,000-year-old urn and dropped it, letting it smash to the ground. Had this happened in London or New York, you might expect Western media to be outraged, but in this instance, they saw the opposite happen. People outside of China buy tickets to see photos of this event in a museum, and those photos sell for staggering amounts of over a million dollars. So why was this action so revered in the West and yet so hated by the CCP that IYY saw decades of persecution at the hands of the Communist Party? Well, I was born in Beijing in 1957 to writer Gao Ying and famed poet Ai Jing. During the anti-rightist movement of 1958, he and his family were exiled to labor camps in remote provinces until the end of the Cultural Revolution. This caused Ai to be exposed to the tyranny of the Communist Party at a very young age. He was clearly a natural artist, with him even co-founding a group of avant-garde artists called the Stars. Being an artist, he was well-versed in antiques and knew the value of historic objects. As Ai Weiwei went about his life, he experienced and witnessed many atrocities committed by the CCP. He saw entire villages uprooted and wiped off the face of the earth, destroying livelihoods just to make room for China's industrial progression. The Communist Party would have you believe that Ai is a destructive criminal, but the act of destroying this historic artifact was simply to protest the immense destruction and damage that the CCP causes every day. The Communist Party harbors a deep hatred for him for this very reason. In 2009, he was beaten and detained in his hotel room in Chengdu after attempting to testify in a trial of human rights activist Tan Zhu Ren. Then, in 2011, he was arrested and kept in confinement for 81 days on unfounded tax evasion charges. The CCP are so desperate to erase him that they have even demolished his Shanghai and Beijing studios. Despite being continually surveyed, followed, and barred from leaving the country, I was allowed to leave China in 2015, and since 2021, he's resided in Portugal. Next, we have Zhao Jinhua. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned Jack Ma. His disappearance garnered massive attention, but he's not the only billionaire in China to experience the wrath of the Communist Party. Zhao Jinhua is a Chinese billionaire investor, and he runs the Tomorrow Group, an investment company known for its mergers and acquisitions. He's yet another example of the phrase, you can get big in China, but no bigger than the CCP. Over five years ago, Zhao went missing in Hong Kong, which spooked the entire city and sparked fears about residents being forcibly disappeared. It's alleged that the Communist Party abducted him as he was apparently seen being whisked out of a Hong Kong hotel in a wheelchair and with his entire body covered by blankets as plain-clothed Chinese secret servicemen flanked him armed with weapons. Those secret servicemen weren't even legally allowed to operate in Hong Kong at the time, but that didn't stop them from reportedly breaking into Zhao's hotel room, beating and torturing him before abducting him as well. He went years without being seen again, and the widespread belief was that he had been beaten to death during an interrogation in his hotel room in Hong Kong, and everything else was a cover-up designed to hide that fact. Earlier this year, though, China formally put him on trial for apparent financial crimes and sentenced him to 13 years in jail while also fining his Tomorrow Holdings conglomerate a record-breaking figure of 8.1 billion US dollars. He was one of mainland China's richest businessmen with high-level connections in the ruling Communist Party. Now, I could go on for days listing celebrities, artists, billionaires, and numerous other people from different walks of life that have been disappeared, silenced, or murdered by the CCP just for saying the wrong thing. But I think you get the point now. The Communist Party is clearly willing to stop at nothing to censor public figures who they see as a threat. 
the CCP has slowly been expanding its control, even reaching its claws into the West. Now, even on YouTube, a Western platform, you can get censored for speaking out against the Chinese Communist Party. Time and time again, my YouTube channels have been threatened with deletion. I've produced and posted many videos exposing what's currently going on in China, and most of these get entirely demonetized. This video will probably join that long list. I've had deals with brands blown up after their shareholders, or should I say Chinese overlords, refuse to work with someone willing to speak the truth. Now I'm not a millionaire with more money than cents. This lost income has a direct impact on my quality of life, but that does not mean I throw all morality to the wayside. If you want to help ensure we can continue to make this kind of content, then please interact with this video, like, comment, and share the video with your friends, get the word out, and ensure that the CCP cannot act with impunity.